G'day and welcome to lecture two. In this lecture, what we want to do is introduce how to think like a scientist and how to how to communicate like a scientist or how scientists communicate in the professional setting. This is really important for all aspects of science, all disciplines of science, and you know, really gets you into the mode of being like a scientist, basically. So the scientific method is fundamental to all areas of science and is how science develops and progresses, basically how science advances. So it all starts with an existing theory that, or idea that you know, is understood that a lot of people believe or maybe not a lot of people believe. But whatever the case, you've got an existing idea or theory, a school of thought, for example, on a particular topic, on a particular area. Now, somebody may have an idea that, hey, maybe it's actually like this or like that. So that's where a new theory is formulated. So you've got an existing theory and then somebody, as a result of their intellectual understanding, looking at data, looking at different experiments or just their you know, awareness of what's, what's going on in that field, have a, another idea that they formulate. So when that idea is formulated, next step in the scientific process is to state a hypothesis. And that hypothesis is important to be able, uh, you know, it needs to be tested, it needs to be a hypothesis that can be tested either through experimentation or by observing in, you know, depends what sort of, uh, what sort of um, scientific field you're in, what kind of uh, data is to be collected or how it's how it's collected. It can be either observing, like if you're in the in the field, for example, doing uh, research in zoology or um, botany, ecology, those those sorts of things. Then it's you know you test your hypothesis through data collection in the field. Whereas if you're in a a lab based discipline, so many areas of chemistry or microbiology, for example, you would conduct an experiment to test your hypothesis in a laboratory setting. When you do that, it's absolutely vital to ensure that you have controls in place so that you know that the uh, observable differences that you're seeing, if there are any, are actually as a result of, um, you know, the basically the difference that you that you expect so if you don't have a control if you don't have a negative control uh you know primarily we're talking about lab-based disciplines here so if you don't have a negative control or a positive control then your results that you obtain are absolutely unreliable because you have no way of knowing what actually happens if there's no change or how it is actually meant to change. So that's why you need a uh, negative control. And in various types of experiments, you have multiple types of negative controls so that you can account for changes that might occur at different, uh, you know, different formulations, different types of different types of changes. So the more controls you have, the more rigorous your methodology, the more rigorous your experimental design, and the more uh, believable your results and the more they're going to stand up to argument and justification. So in a, a um, scientific forum, when you're presenting your results, the more controls you have, the better it is uh, for you because you'll be able to argue against any, uh, any arguments, uh, you know, counter any arguments that come your way that are trying to refute your particular result. And of course, it uh, is extremely important to have statistical uh, uh, backup as well. So you need to have a whole range of statistical um, analysis that is appropriate, I must add, that is appropriate to the type of experiment, experimental methodology, the type of data collection, the type of, um, the type of, uh, um, you know, type of, uh, scientific discipline that that you're in and it's pretty much impossible to generalize but it's important to know what is appropriate in your discipline for the type of experiment or methodology that you're using 
and to be able to uh, analyze your data through those statistics. So as a result of that, then what you come across uh, as the next stage is whether your hypothesis is supported or not supported. So you remember at the, at the early stage, you came up with a hypothesis that you wanted to test, and then you go through the data collection, you design your experiments appropriately so that they are rigorous, and then you analyze statistically analyze them, and then you are able to uh, see whether your data supports or does not support the hypothesis that you stated at the early stage. Then you can then you can uh, actually formulate a new theory if your data that you collected and statistically analyzed does um, does support the hypothesis, then you can support uh, then you can formulate a new theory otherwise, that means that the old theory will then be supported because even though you produced data uh, to, um, to test a hypothesis, if it wasn't uh, statistically valid or supported, then that means you have an advanced knowledge or you have advanced knowledge, but you haven't, uh, you haven't supported that new uh, hypothesis. Then, what you need to do is publish your work in the public domain so that other people, other scientists know that you've actually done this work so that they don't end up doing the work again. And when they publish, uh, when scientists publish work in a scholarly academic setting, there's a standard uh, format for all kinds of reports in science, no matter what what discipline uh, you're in. You know, sure, there are you know slight differences here and there between disciplines, but largely, as a consistently con, as a consistent standard uh, um, across all fields of science, you have an abstract which is typically a two to three hundred word uh, summary of the of of the whole of the whole project or the report, which details why you um, why you did it, the methodology you used, what were the results, what does it mean, what are you concluding, those sorts of things. So when you're actually getting into the real paper as such, you have an introduction section which you use to set the scene, so to speak. So you give relevant information about the background, context, what's been done previously, why the work needs to be done, why it's important, and, and that sort of thing. And you end by giving a uh, like stating the aims and objectives of, of the work um, with all that background uh, uh, context so leading up to you know why you're doing this work you give all the background which shows basically the need for the work that you're doing and then you state your aims and objectives of the current current uh, current piece of work then how did you do the work so the materials and the methodology used need to be described in a lot of detail so that somebody can actually replicate your work so remember when you're writing up experiments and your methodology section and the material section it needs to be in sufficient detail remember you don't need to write everything down but you need to write it down in a way that people can replicate your work so you know you might be referring to another um, another report or a published paper or if not then you need to give a lot of detail as to how you actually did something so that somebody can replicate it. Uh, you know, somebody with the same level of technical scientific competence as you can replicate the work. Results is where you present your results and nothing more. So a lot of a lot of people, at least at early stages of writing scientific reports, think it's sufficient to just put in tables or graphs, but descriptions text descriptions of the data is absolutely absolutely essential so you should always write text of your results and then you put in you know you put in a table or put in some graphs to make it easier to read easier to see that particular data uh, so the text is describing what's in the table or what's in the graph but also highlighting any particular uh, anomalies to to uh, to the data or anything important that you want to want to highlight 
then the discussion is regarded as the most important, the most intellectual, the most, um, you know, really the most scientifically, uh, um, uh, you know, solid part of the paper where you draw everything that you've done together and analyze the data, discuss the data, discuss any shortcomings, any flaws, any, any anomalies and what they mean, and then use that to propose you know, a new theory or why are you seeing what you're seeing and what does it, what does it actually mean? And it's important to describe what it actually means in the context of the work that's been done before. So you talk about previous, previous work in that area, how you're extending that work and how your current data fits into the existing body of knowledge and how that, uh, you know, basically what it actually means, how you're advancing science in that, in that particular uh, way. And, you know, what you actually conclude is typically in a separate conclusion section where you're meant to provide a statement addressing the aims and objectives. So remember, a conclusion is not a, not a summary of what you did and is not a summary of the work. It's actually reaching a conclusion that you... Um, you know, are uh, writing in response to what you set out to do in the first place. So what you set out to do is is embodied in the aims and the objectives of the work. And at the end of that, essentially like a punchline, you know, what, what are you concluding? What have you actually found? You're not summarizing it. It's just a conclusion as to how you are, are addressing the aims and objectives that you set out to achieve in the whole um, in this whole body of work, and then the references uh, section is you know, extremely important because you need to cite previous work, you need to cite uh, you know classic papers uh, to set the scene of your particular uh, project. And you need to cite important methodology papers uh, as well. So, you know the types of types of papers that you reference, uh, that you cite in your reference uh, list, which need to be uh, cited in text as well, really show how you are on top of your 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 area of of work. Really, you know, have you you know made a glaring omission? in a particular piece of work which you know, is absolutely essential to what you're doing have you uh not used a important piece of uh methodology which is you know a, describing a, a classical method in your in your field and other um you know the flip side is if you've used you know the absolute key and fundamental papers then that shows the audience like who's reading your work how you know well versed you are in your scientific field and that ends lecture two on scientific reports communicating like a scientist how to think like a scientist how to you know formulate an idea in a scientific field thank you very much for your attention and i look forward to seeing you in a subsequent lecture bye